This week, we have uh, Dr. Atharani, who is currently a NASA postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, which is um, just a short drive away from here. Uh, her research focuses on studying planetary volcanic and tectonic uh, surface processes, mainly using remote sensing data, both geochemical and uh, geophysical uh, data sets. Uh, she has a PhD in Earth Science from the Indian Institute of Technology and a master's in technology and bachelor's from um, Kurukshetra uh, University, uh, both in India. She did part of her PhD actually at Louisiana uh, State. Um, and uh, so she actually has been, even though uh, in her CV it says PhD uh, from uh, in India, she actually uh, did uh, part of her PhD here uh, in the US, also a short drive away. And so very happy uh, that she's here. She's gonna be talking about some of her research on Mars, particular, particularly focused on uh, volcanism. So thank you very much. Thank you, Francis, and uh, thank you so much for coming. And here you can see the title that uh, I will be talking about the uh, volcanism and tectonism, and that to be uh, infer about the interior structure of the planetary body, uh, that to be a red, red planet. And the picture behind, you can see there is like some fissures over there, and you, you can see that the magma is coming to underneath, and that is coming to the surface, and the volcanism that is a property that I'm using as a proxy to infer about the interior process of the planetary body. I am not a like geochemist who is like working on the lab, <laughs> like studying the meteorite, but I'm using all the, all the same techniques to infer about the interior pro uh, processes of the Mars. So this is like a research area that I was focused on during my PhD. I work extensively on Mars geological history, its interior, and uh, right now I'm working on the seismic data analysis uh, for geophysical properties. I was also involved in uh, hazard characterization of rover mission Chandrayaan 3. I did uh, some case study for the Perseverance rover as well. And right now I'm involved in the Gingo 3 concept uh, of mission design at Louisiana State University. And these are my sites. You can follow me if you are interested in the volcanism. So before going into the research and the, what I have done during my PhD, so here you can see that this is a schematic diagram when we were studying and looking for the mass. And uh, here you can see that the volcanism is the only process that is happening throughout its history, starting with the Noachian, which was the early formation period of the mass. And it was going uh, till the Amazonian. However, uh, the, the volcanic activity was more active during the Noachian and the Hesperian time period. But with the time, it was decreased over. And uh, he, the Volcanism is directly related to the surface and atmosphere evolution. As we know that, here you can see that we are the signature of minerals that we have from the Grisom data sets that shows that there are clay minerals which forms the water rock interaction uh, from the primary rock. And the water will sustain on the mass only when we have a thick atmosphere or it might be a subsurface uh, water at the time. So they have... Uh, from the mineralogy, we, we predict it is a warm, wet condition at the early formation of Mars. But right now, what we see is like dry and cold atmospheres. So there is always question like, what happened to Mars, which leads to these type of drastic changes on Mars. So this is like what I, I'm interested in, and that is like my, my motivation to uh, study the uh, volcanism as a proxy to evolution of Mars. And here on the right side, you can see uh, why I'm looking for the volcanism, because the volcanism is a process in which the melt, that the magma, which is forming at the interior of the planetary body, will, lead, uh, will be inferring about the uh, thermodynamic conditions at which the melt was forming at that time. And it was coming to the surface, and the chemistry that we see on the surface over here it will be depending on uh, what was the pressure, temperature, source, degree of partial melting at the time it was forming. So I will be using the remote sensing data, uh, gamma ray spectroscopic data, elemental data, to infer about all these properties by the thermodynamic modeling. So, but, uh, and uh, these are like uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight for how I am going from the top to the interior of the planetary body. And uh, this is the, starting uh, my PhD first paper, starting with the morphology of the volcanism. And uh, I was new to this uh, volcanic 
topic. I was not, uh, I am a geophysicist uh, from the master's, so I'm not a geologist. I'm trained geology, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I studied uh, with the morphology of the volcanism, associate tectonic fields, and their formation age uh, using a uh, different variety of the data sets that we have uh, from the different space missions. And we have uh, global elemental data sets and uh, mineral distribution from the Creason on Mars. These are the available data sets that we have. But uh, the later two parts, I did uh, the thermodynamic modeling and thermoelastic property of interior Mars by the simulation process. So uh, there is a, right now we can see that uh, there is a lot of mission data uh, that is like almost 50 mission data. And uh, you have extensively explored planet to study all these uh, 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 techniques. And uh, we are more towards the exploration of human mission on Mars. Uh, and uh, these are the feature, uh, the uh, like these are the uh, data sets or the missions that I was using for my study. But there are lots of fifty missions there, so you are open to use. And thanks to PDS, the planetary data systems that you that is available for free, even though you are not in US. <laughs> so uh, that's all like uh, thing that yeah. But I was excited. Uh, this is the thing that you see today. But I was excited to see uh, show you like how our journey. Uh, start uh, to explore the Mars. And this is the unlikely story of the first photo of the Mars from Minor 4. And this is a hand-colored version that uh, is uh, drawn by the scientist being an artist or there. And you can see that uh, these are literally hand-painted. And when you zoom into this one, they, how they painted this one, these are the numbers, the DNA numbers <laughs> over there. They, they had painted everything. And there is a one very interesting video uh, that you can check it on uh, CNN Business. So <laughs> uh, they, they have very interesting video like that. I, I was very happy to see that. And uh, the, why did they, they did that instead of taking the actual picture? Because the tap recorder they have on the Manon 4 was on, uh, failed. And they only have 21 images with the DN numbers, and they just there was a, some engineering person came out of their uh, engineering thing, and they said like, oh, we will paste all the uh, DN numbers and the coloring. So they 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 did that, and I was fortunate enough uh, during the JPL visit this summer, and that I see this by my eyes. So this is like uh, the story behind the first picture. I hope many of them you have seen that, but. Uh, yeah, I, 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 this is my first uh, thing that I was excited about. So now, uh, this is the one uh, first global map of Mars, which is actually uh, the picture of Mars with the different features over uh, Martian surface. You have some fe uh, like tectonic features uh, you can see over here. And you have a cratered floor. You have a smooth floor. You, uh, you have big mountains that uh, at that time they were not knowing how big it is. So from uh, recent exploration and uh, different molar data sets, that is a uh, uh, topographic uh, map that we have is like the Olympus most, almost 21 kilometer high. So imagine how big it is. But uh, from Porto, we cannot imagine that. <laughs> so I have a reference of the Mount Everest that uh, how Mount Everest is the tallest uh, mountain of our earth and it's almost 8.85 kilometer in height and and olympus Mos is like 21 kilometer so it's like thrice of the mount everest that we have and uh, being born and brought up uh, under the uh, near to uh, the himalayas uh, uh, in delhi uh, i was fortunate enough to see uh, and being in the part of uh, mountain Everest baseline, which is like almost five kilometer, but still I'm not there in the <laughs> uh, Mount Everest. So yeah, this is like kind of thing. It's a very, very big mons that uh, that is the tallest mons of our solar system. So uh, how it forms. So there is a one big reason that the Mars is not having a tectonic activity but uh, our Earth is tectonically active. So hotspot is there, which is like stagnant, and the tectonic plate is moving over. So we have islands like Hawaii, but uh, Mars doesn't have a tectonic. So we don't have that um, in, uh, in, in the Mars. So that uh, leads to the episodic events of the volcanism that, that leads to the formation of this Olympus modes. So coming to the different style of volcanism on Mars, just like Earth we have, 
So we have a uh, Olympus Moss that I already explained. That this is like kind of a topographic features that you, which is tall enough having a shield volcano, and uh, this could be formed because of effusive type of eruption uh, with low vis uh, viscosity and a smooth flow of the lava. And after that, we have a Hesperian time period, which is the older uh, time period than the Amazonian, and which we call is a patera, which is like relatively flat and pancake type of uh, construct. So uh, this is more related to the more, more involvement of the gas uh, uh, than the shield volcano that we have. And after that, the recently discovered Michalski in Bleacher in 2013, Noachian volcanism, uh, which was not discovered before because the construct uh, that we see on Amazon and Hesperian was not look like the what we have discovered for the Noachian. These are the Caldera complexes uh, construct, uh, uh, construct, which is like forming when there are like explosive volcanism, just like if you have seen uh, the Yellowstone uh, calderas, that they have a uh, lots of gases in it, and they come accumulate, and they just uh, do the, uh, the burst and then collapse. So they don't have these type of uh, shield uh, episodic events. So my interest is more aligned to the Noachian time period, which is the early formation time period of the mass. Uh, reason being uh, why I'm interested in the early formation of mass, because if you see that uh, ma uh, the, we, have a, uh, we don't have a written sample for mass, but we have uh, like meteorites. That is the kind of, uh, uh, different uh, proxies for uh, in, uh, looking into the interior of the planetary body. So if you see that the age of the these uh, Shargotites, which is representing the Martian volcanism, which is more related to the Amazonian time period, but we don't have any sample from the Noachian and Hesperian. So we need the global study to infer about the complete picture, how the evolution happened from early to the present condition. So. I have, uh, I, like, as the Mars tell, uh, meteorite told us, like, mantle is heterogeneous, but we don't know how it evolved from uh, the early formation to the present uh, condition. So that's why I'm using all these uh, different age of uh, uh, volcanic provinces. And my interest uh, lying in the Arabia Terra, because the Chaskin bleacher was highlighting this is like Noachian old age. Uh, time period this like uh, near to 3.9 billion years. So, and uh, there was a one uh, study by uh, Veritex 2011. They have used the gamma ray spectroscopic data sets for the Hesperian and Amazonian. And uh, this showed that like there is a trend between the compositional trend between the Amazonian to the Hesperian time period. And uh, that from this, they have uh, do the petrological modeling and comes come to the uh, information that uh, with the time the lithospheric thickness is increasing with the cooling of the Martian interior. So that's the one motivation that I was uh, looking uh, doing the same work, uh, including the Noachian. And but as I said that we don't know <laughs> Noachian period uh, that the composition trend that we see is like following here as uh, that uh, Hesperian, Amazonian, and the Noachian, or it is diverting from the other, other way. So we are, first we will look for the compositional trend, and uh, after that we do the, go for the petrological modeling of this one. So uh, as I said, uh, I started with the morphology uh, uh, study, and uh, Michalski and Bleacher has proposed uh, that Northwestern Arabia Terra has a Caldera complexes. They, he didn't propose like whole Arabia Terra is uh, following that trend. And I, I explored whole Arabia Terra and find out the tectonic features over there. They are wrinkle ridges that we delineated over this one. And we came across one interesting uh, uh, crater, which is like having an interesting location. You can see the 28 east, 28 north. So it's like completely like targeting that thing. And if you see that, it's the molar topography map. And at the interior, you have like different features, but when uh, we come to the crater formation, then when the impact happens, there should be a, some uh, central peak, but we don't have that. Uh, the reason could be that uh, there is a, some uh, erosion happened because the crater is like almost 3.8 billion years ago. So when we did the 3D uh, elevation model, that you can see that these are the like, mounds and there are like some ridges that we later on prove that are like intruded dikes. 
and which is feeding to these these mounts. And uh, these are the curve features, and which is like very different uh, from other other diets. And uh, this type of the mounts with the ridges that we see over here is very uh, similar to the analog that we have in scoria cones uh, feeding by these dikes. And uh, after that, uh, I did the strat uh, strat uh, analysis and uh, there is like, you can see that the ridges is like intruding into me Mesa and there is a small displacement that you can see over here. And here also you can see the cross-section view of this uh, Mesa. And uh, this dikes is like completely intruding into this one. So this shows that like the features that we have is more towards uh, the volcanic. It's not like erosional features that can be uh, formed uh, because of uh, some erosional activities in this area. And uh, later on, uh, uh, interesting th thing that we have, like these are the uh, wrinkle ridges that we delineated. And we find that the orientation of the dikes and the azimuth of the cone is aligned with the direction that we have tectonic features, the potential ridges uh, in, in this area. And uh, this, this shows that the because if you uh, if uh, the impact happens and uh, dike may infill those, uh, then the uh, rose diagram that we called is it should be like a multi-directional and or either either uh, they are concentric uh, rings formed. And then you take the rose di diagram, then it will be multi-directional. It it will not align in the uh, you know, bi-directional that we have uh, in this uh, study reason. So we propose using the study that uh, this Im uh, this impact uh, happened uh, on uh, underlying the magma chamber, and that re-triggered this uh, beach, uh, this uh, magma and coming to the surface. This leads to the this volcano and the dike infiltration in this area. And uh, I was happy to sh show that this was uh, highlighted in the cover page of the JGR Planets. And uh, and uh, this crater was unnamed at the time when I uh, started working on. And we proposed the name Ramanathan Crater after first director of PRL from where I did PhD. So this is the first Indian scientist who was after whose name uh, this crater, uh, any crater on the Mars was named. And this was also highlighted in the planetary uh, geomorphology of the month. And now this is a morphology uh, study that we did. After that, uh, the question is like the compositional trend. I was talking about the Noachian uh, thing. So I use the gamma ray uh, elemental data sets. So the elemental data sets that you have, this is like uh, the individual data sets, right? So you can see that iron is enriched somewhere. It is depleted somewhere, but and similar to other elements. We have a nine uh, global elements, but you cannot tell by using the single element that which uh, geological process leads to this formation of uh, uh, or enrichment of these elements over that, that process. So we need an uh, element to element correlation, which, uh, which will tell us uh, like which uh, geological process is responsible for the enrichment and depletion. So for that, we did a consolidated geochemical provinces of Mars. And uh, using uh, different statistical analysis techniques, we are using three an analytic technique just to overcome the effect of the technique. Uh, and uh, we are confident about the geological uh, processes that, and the delineation of these provinces. And, uh, and we are confident uh, enough that uh, our delineation is following the geology of the mass. Uh, how? Uh, you can see that this is the molar map. And over there, this is the one area, lunar planum, that came out from our uh, consolidated geochemical province. And we, when we projected over the geological map, you can see it is like a small patch, and which is like completely different out of the other regions. So it's like highlighted in that. So the compositional trend is following the geochemical map. So we are confident that like the techniques that we have used is, is representing the underlying geology instead of any a uh, glitch or like uh, discrepancy of any technique. And uh, comparing uh, the lunar planum with the other other reasons, we have uh, Acidia planitia, which is like adjacent to the lunar planum, the Acidia planitia. And here you also can see that the delineation or mapping, mapping boundary of our, our uh, geochemical province is like following the geochemist, uh, the geological map underlying this one. And uh, and they are like having a different province. 
And the different province here means that we have a different chemistry. And here, this is the uh, box whisker plot. And uh, just to understand what exactly it is, if uh, this is like uh, line one representing average Martian crust composition, if the box is lying above this one, then it represents the enrichment of that element in particular area. And if it is uh, down the, uh, the unity line, then it is representing that it is uh, it is depleted in that uh, element in that geyser. So for here, I can say that H2O is depleted in lunar planum, and uh, it is also depleted in potassium thorium. But on the other hand, the, uh, the acidia planitia, which is like enriched in potassium and thorium. So we are confident, like, even though they are like very close uh, uh, province uh, by geology, but the chemistry is different, and we are getting it from our uh, province uh, delineation map. So, and coming to the geological evolution of the Mars from Noachian to Amazonian, here you can see that we have a province A, B, C, D, and Arabia Terra. And these numbers, uh, the letters represent the age, like Amazonian Hesperian volcanic and Amazonian volcanics. So here you can see that the province A, B, C, and Arabia Terra are mostly dominated with the Noachian terrain, and B is Amazonian time period. And D is uh, uh, this region, uh, which is lowland region, and which is mostly lying in the uh, uh, late Hesperian lowland region, and which is like completely different trend, uh, which is not following in the southern hand. If you see this one, all provinces like A, uh, C, and B, all are lying in the highland region, if you know, and the green one represents the lowland region. And from different hypotheses, we know that the origin of the lowland region of Mars is completely different. But chemistry is also saying the same thing. And uh, it, this is not only the two variables that we are saying. We are saying it with the other uh, major elements like calcium, silica, iron, and aluminum. And you can see that all reasons are following this trend going uh, from up to down. But the uh, lowland region is not following this one. So this is clearly showing that uh, the uh, highland is uh, for evolved from uh, same body, but uh, not the uh, lowland region. So this shows the compositional heterogeneity over the time that is evolving at the interior of the Mars. So we say that like the Noachian is following the trend. Now we come to the petrological modeling. Uh, we have a composition. We take the average of those reasons and uh, we compare our study of the Arabia Terra with all. Uh, all other studies, and you can see that compositional variation. Even though they are distinct apart from a distance, but the, their chemistry is completely similar. You can say that the Thomasia SWIP reason are having a semi, same chemistry with the same age. And here also you can see that the Hesperia, the uh, Citrus Mesa, Hesperia Planum is also having a similar chemistry. They are depleted uh, near to silica and depleted in pot uh, potassium as well. And uh, again, we're going for the Amazonian time period, which is like almost similar uh, trend that we have. So we can say that the, irrespective of where they are locating on the surface of mass, we have a similar chem chemistry with the age. So uh, there is a, always a question because the gamma ray spectroscopic data set is having a broader uh, area like uh, it's a pixel size is like 300 to 300 kilometer and there is always debate like how reliable this is uh, when you are doing the chemistry uh, because people have in situ data and uh, they said like okay they, they the signature that we are getting is like uh, from the chemical or aqueous alteration so to answer that i say uh, like if you are comparing with the micrometer with the broader scale of kilometers that definitely there is a high error bar and uh, we know that like at uh, some uh, some of the locations we have a high aqueous alteration signatures but we know on martian surface globally we have a, a picratic basalt composition it's uh, the alteration is not all over the mars surface so if you talk about the larger scale then the chemistry is uh, primary and which is like picratic basalt so and uh, to defend that point i can say at the great, uh, greater scale uh, we have a potassium to thorium fractionation ratio because potassium and thorium is the incompatible element uh, which will not uh, which will not do not fractionate when it magma is coming to uh, the surface 
So then the potassium to thorium uh, fractionation ratio will be following the same trend as the Martian surface uh, crust is following. And this is the regression line for that. And these are the reasons that I have plotted. And you can see that they are falling within the trend. And after that, we have this ternary diagram. And that is like uh, saving the uh, aqueous alteration on the Martian surface. Uh, in art, we know that terrestrial weathering all lie over here. But in case of Mars, we have low pH aqueous alteration with low water to growth ratios. Then uh, the, alter uh, the aluminum uh, sublimation is limited. So all the fact, all the aqueous alteration and altered one lie below this uh, Felsberg oligon line. And here you can see that our reason is also falling on the unaltered uh, line as compared to what we have compared with the in-situ data of the Gale and Gustav and Zizero as well. And uh, along with that, we have a CIA, a chemical index of alteration. And here also you can see that the weathering trend is below the 50 that shows that it's a, uh, not weathered at all. Uh, and we also compare uh, with the in-situ data sets that we have. So from that, we can say that it's, uh, it's not that uh, altered product that we have with the greater scale. And using that, uh, uh, you might know uh, the thermodynamic modeling that we use is like female, alpha male, and thermobarometries. So using those uh, simulations, we have derived the pressure temperature conditions for these um, melt that we have from different age groups. And we also compare with the in-situ data sets that we already have. Uh, for these studies. And uh, you can see that these are the reason uh, the green one uh, uh, with the cyan one is like uh, the Noachian time period. And this uh, round shape are mostly the Hesperian time period. And uh, this is the diamond shape are mostly the Amazonian. And you can say the, the melt that was forming in the Amazonian is uh, forming at a high pressure and temperature condition as compared to what we have uh, during the Noachian Hesperian time period. That shows that with the time, our uh, lithospheric thickness increases, and uh, we need more high pressure and temperature to melt that uh, melt that uh, interior part of the volcano that we have in the Amazonian time period. And using this pressure temperature conditions, we are estimating the lithospheric thickness and uh, and the heat flows uh, during that time formation. And here you can see that uh, the lithospheric thickness or the melt depth at which they, it was forming, it was not uh, having a greater difference in Noachian to Hesperia. It's almost the similar uh, lithos, uh, like malformation depth. But in the Amazonian, it is increasing uh, like drastically. So it we don't know how why it is changing. And as I said in my first thematic diagram, that uh, there is a drastic change happen at the late, no late, late Hesperian to early Amazonian time period. But we don't know why it happens. But these are the uh, estimations from the melt composition that we have, uh, what pressure temperature could be at the interior of the planetary body at the different time scales. So this is a like, very rough diagram, I can say. Uh, it's not that uh, tempting, <laughs> not to scale. And this is like the melting zone that we uh, say that is like having a less uh, lithospheric. And with the time, the Amazonian time period is having a greater thickness uh, with the different type of uh, gas or like less gas in uh, their lava coming and fill, uh, forming the shield volcanoes. So these are, uh, and we also, it is, as I said, irrespective of the regional scale, our geological analysis reinforces the geophysical evidences of the uniform lithospheric thickness from Noachian to Hesperian time period. Uh, with the shallow melting uh, during the Hesperian period. So this is also we compare with the geophysical analysis that uh, they have done in 2023, and we are following the same uh, lithospheric thickness for Noachian and Hesperian time period. And uh, as uh, I, that was my PhD work that I have done during my PhD, and this is the work that I'm right now doing uh, in my uh, Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, as a NASA past postdoc. So this part I have completed. Now I'm doing developing a, a thermoelastic model uh, for uh, inferring about the thermoelastic properties of Martian interior. And the project completely lie on this reason, the Elysium moons. And uh, because we recently we have a lots of uh, study that shows that there is an active magma chamber beneath the Cerebe fossils that leads uh, the, a part of this formation of the foci over here. And 
happy uh, like the thing good thing is that we have insight lender over there so we we can compare our geophysical model that we have developed with the geophysical analysis that we have and uh, these are preliminary results that uh, how i'm doing this one so I, I'm uh, using, as of now, I'm using my uh, bulk silicate mass composition uh, to uh, infer about uh, the interior, but later on, I will be using my composition that I have already derived for the Elysium modes. And these are the factors that we can calculate from the elastic modeling that we have, the pressure, temperature, gravity, PPVS, and uh, the bulk modulus. And I also compare the DW85 composition with the radius that, uh, so, with the uh, available geophysical data sets, and it is like having a good correlation uh, within that. This is the ongoing work that I'm doing. And we are looking forward to the mass return sample because they have different objectives. Uh, I'm looking for the primary rock uh, instead of the like, secondary clay minerals because they have an implication uh, to, the, to help us to understand the discrepancy that we see from the meteorite that is having a very uh, biased sampling, I can say, uh, because the age that we see is all um, Amazonian. It is not Noahic and Hesperian, but the sample that we are getting from the Hesperian, so it might be helpful for us to infer about the dis uh, discrepancy that we have from uh, meteorite in situ and the remote sensing geophysical data. And I was also looking for the mass geophysical network. This is like proposed that is not there as of now. But yeah, if uh, because single seismometer cannot help you to understand all the interior of the planetary body, we need at least three uh, seismic uh, seismometer to find out the epicenter of the where from where the uh, the like earthquake or mass is happening. So we at least three uh, seismic data networks that we need it. And at the end, I can say that this department and the talk is organized by the astrobiology. So I will not disappoint all you <laughs> that volcanism is not directly related to the interior and all properties. It also helps us to uh, uh, understand the astrobiology and help us for the mass uh, human exploration because the lava tubes is the one of the natural uh, place where you can find the present and past uh, life. Uh, because the, it is like the underneath uh, covered reason which which can uh, help us to uh, find uh, the astrobiological research. And this is a natural shelter for the mass human exploration. And thank you so much for this one. Thank you.